Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in Germany here at Manhart to take a look at the car just inside the showroom behind me, their new MH8 800. Now this is the fastest BMW M8 competition in the world. We're going to go inside, take a look around the car before taking it out for a drive and where better to head than a de-restricted section of the German autobahns to go and experience what over 800 horsepower in an M8 feels like. Let's head straight on in then and go check out the Manhart MH8 800. Come on in then to the showroom here at Manhart where we will take a look around at this awesome lineup. But we are here to see this the new MH8 800 based on the M8. Now, on a previous visit, I did take that car out for a drive, the MH8 600 based on BMW's M850i. But this is now Manhart working their magic on the M8 competition, and it boasts some quite frankly insane performance numbers, which we will go through in just a second. When we get back, I'll show you around the showroom in more detail because we do have here the M4 DTM Champion Edition, we've got an E30 M3, we've got the likes of the Supra with 450 horsepower, the Golf R, the M6 Grand Coupe with 700 horsepower, the X3, the M850, and of course the M8 Competition. Now, as the name suggests, 800 because it has over 800 horsepower. In fact, the standard 625 that comes from the 4.4 litre twin power turbo V8 is now up to 823. 198 horsepower more than standard, almost 200, and torque as well as that has gone from 750 newton meters all the way to 1,000. 50, 300 newton meters more than standard. Now the car has the all-wheel drive MX drive system, which means this thing can launch from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour, in just, get this, 2.6 seconds. The standard is already fast at 3.2, but at 2.6, that's in supercar killer territory. It will then go 100 kilometers an hour up to 200 kilometers an hour, 124 miles per hour in just five and a half. This thing boasts insane numbers. Now visually, to go through some of the other changes we can see, it's wearing Manhart's traditional launch livery, the decorative black and gold. We've also got some new carbon fibre parts. So for example, down here at the front grill, we've got this new carbon insert reminiscent of the M2 competition. This lower lip is really nice as well. Normally, this car has a satin black plastic piece under there. This is now extended and made from carbon fiber, looking very good. As we come round towards the side, we've got the 21 inch Manhart Concave One wheels. It's also sitting noticeably lower, thanks to some KW springs. So it's 30 millimeters lower than standard. And then as we come round towards the rear, we've also got the carbon add-on here as well as a new exhaust system, which we're gonna hear in a moment, but a rather, I guess, quite loud one, which I'm looking forward to experiencing as well, along with the quad carbon fiber tailpipes that you have at the back. Now to get this extra power, the engine has new turbo, new intercooler, um, a new ECU tune, of course, and the gearbox has had to be worked to take that extra torque. Let's come through, just open up the car, got the key just here, so we can open up the engine bay as well. But inside here, a few other small changes you will notice, Manhart floor mats, but also we have the carbon fiber for the steering wheel inserts, which is really nice too. Pop open the engine bay to come and have a quick look at that before we get it fired up and take this car on out. Inside here then, like I said, the 4.4 liter twin power turbo, bigger turbo kit, obviously has to run some cooling as well in some of the hotter markets, but this car, it's going to be a bit of a beast, so let's get it started up then. Let's get the car on outside. Always a bit of a challenge to close the BMW bonnets, to give it a very firm close, and then it will be time to drive. <laughs> well, that makes quite a sound. It rumbles away. We'll get the car pulled on outside, and then I'll hop on board. Side. The good thing about this car is that unlike the Schmiermobile, it has already done a couple of thousand miles, so it's run in and ready to be driven. But driving at the moment in normal mode, everything in the default settings in terms of the configuration, like the suspension, the gearbox, the powertrain, all of that side of things, you don't really tell all that much is different from standard. There is a bit more response to the right foot, to the throttle pedal, and there is a little bit more sound out of it as well, but it's not uncomfortable, it's not unreasonable, it's not an unpleasant place to be in any form. You can 
can hear is it starts downshifting the gears just a little bit more south, but it is a valve controlled exhaust system, so it can be quieter if you want. Now, if I press M1, which puts everything into the sportier settings, you start to get a little bit more sense that this car is a very, very potent thing. If you then go into M2, which involves pressing it twice because you need to confirm it, it goes manual on the gearbox and start to just drop down a few gears, you definitely get a little bit of a sense that this car is something rather insane. In fact, when you do put your foot down on the throttle pedal, there is so much torque that in any gear, it just picks up and flies into the distance. It is really very, very fast. We will, of course, experience more of that onto the, uh, the autobahns in a moment. But just to go down through some gears, I haven't quite worked out when it decides to make which particular sounds. Let's go back into M1 just for the time being, take it a, a little bit more easily. Obviously there's a lot of sound deadening in here, so it's not it's not crazy, crazy loud when you're inside the car. It's, it's actually pretty reasonable and pleasant, to be honest. And then when we get to the edge of the little village, and we can start to put the foot down. In fact, let's go back into M2, drop some gears to get ready. When we get back into the countryside speed limits, yep, big bang out of it, foot down. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <laughs> It's really ridiculously fast, but it's fast and still somehow so comfortable because it's an M8 and it offers you know, this really nice seating position, loads of great tech, everything that the M8 has just with this rather insane soundtrack and level of performance, which is just, well, on a different, you know, different category to standard. One thing I have noticed is if you kind of go up and down the rev a little bit, you do start to get some of those really big bangs. Unfortunately, we're going about half the speed limit at the moment, so I can't uh, show too much. But when we do get out onto an open stretch, this is going, yeah, there we go. This is going to be quite something. Here's a demonstration in fourth gear, foot on the throttle, lift off, and you get a bang out of the back of it. Same again as we come round out of the corner, foot on the throttle, lift off. <laughs> it's a little bit um, predictable, maybe, but it's quite entertaining nonetheless. And, you know, cars like this, that's supposed to be entertaining, right? And then the other thing is that you can make it so gentle and civilised if you should prefer. I like how M2 is set up in this car because I always like that really sporty driving feel, but with suspension in its most compliant mode, in the softest mode, because normally you don't have roads that are quite as perfectly smooth as we do out here. Anyway, it's not too far to go to the autobahn stretch that I'm intending to head to for the moment where we will get to experience more of this. First gear is very, very twitchy. I will say that. Obviously there's a lot of power under your right foot and you're, you know, you're aware of it. Yeah, it's when you keep going through the gears, like third gear feels like even more power comes in and that's where it packs the biggest punch. After quite a bit of traffic, we are finally joining a stretch of the Autobahn, which I believe to be de-restricted. So we will head on out. At the moment, everything is back into full kind of normal mode, normal settings. But even in here, you just feel a bit of that torque, a bit of the kick from behind. Yeah, I mean, even in sixth gear, it's just picking up remarkably fast. And we're up to 250 kilometers per hour already. Just like, like a walk in the park. Absolute walk in the park. This is kind of crazy, crazy smooth and easy in this car. And yes, okay, you hear a bit of wind noise from the outside, but it rides at these kind of speeds. And this is what a car like the M8 does so very, very well. It's amazing how relaxed you can be at such a fast speed in a car like this. If I go into M1 as well, make everything a little bit sportier. In fact, I might go manual uh, on the shifter as well. Let's just use some of the paddles for this. <laughs> I guess the exhaust will warm up a little bit as well. Yeah, I know this thing's going to be really, really quick if I went foot completely flat. Obviously so far it's just a bit of a cruise. Yeah, as it opens in front, the foot goes down even around the corner. This is silly fast. It's 250 again almost, just like that. It's incredible. Obviously the autobahn is quite busy, but I think we should be able to find an emptier stretch. 
You almost feel them. When the exhaust does those backfires, you feel the whole car shake just a little bit. The way it picks up power and speed, it's crazy. It's genuinely crazy because it's pretty undramatic for what it's doing. I mean, even going back onto the brakes, obviously we've got the carbon ceramics and Manhart can do a brake upgrade if needed. Not that the carbon ceramics that you can get on the M8 are bad by any stretch of the imagination, but just kick down straight on the power. It almost makes you a little bit dizzy. But that was basically 100 to 200. Like, I, I mean, I think it could even be quicker than five and a half seconds. Back onto the kick down. 70, 180, 190, 200, 210. Watch out for the car. Just endless, effortless power. We're back up to about 250 again. What is this? 260. And I mean, I'm not foot flat. I'm not at all foot flat on the throttle because of being on a corner. But it's just a gentle cruise. There are many cars that can maintain this speed this comfortably. That's what's so remarkable about driving in the M8 is that it is a very pleasant place to be driving at 200 plus. Go past a little smart car at 260. Insane. Let's just hope we get a, an empty stretch out ahead at some point soon. If I knock the shifter to the right, we then go into manual, sixth gear, even there with the torque. The numbers just build up at a monstrous rate. 50, 260, 270, 280, what, 290, and over 300, I'm going to go hard onto the brakes, 305, like it's nothing, like it's absolutely nothing, and then even at this speed, again, the comfort with which it rides, this is the ultimate autobahn mile muncher, kilometre muncher, just eating up the tarmac. There aren't many cars this smooth like this. Not many. If I just drop down a gear, fifth gear, fourth gear, foot on the throttle, you just watch the numbers on the dashboard. We get the shift lights as well. And the way they clock up. Going 100 foot flat. Get this. The rate with which this picks up is just insanity. Get to 240 that quickly. How does it do that? <laughs> and then those explosions. I'm not sure how much they carry over on the camera because really the car is quite quiet and relatively peaceful for the level of performance. This is what's so kind of crazy about the, the mix and I guess what this offers is that if you were driving a one or 200 kilometer daily commute on the German Autobahn, and you were in a position where you could drive a car like an M8, we go past quite a big traffic jam coming towards us. There isn't really much that does what this does in the way that it does it. Just this insane level of performance that come towards a traffic jam in our direction as well. Drop the gears, turn on the hazards. Unfortunately, this is not going to be quite so fun, but this is where, you know, we'll turn it back into drive. You know, you could turn on the adaptive cruise control and use it for the traffic jam. Obviously, it's got all the lane assist, all the things that we know from the M8 and the, the big M cars and BMW flagship models. It's a very comfortable place to be. Seat heating, seat ventilation, your gesture control to turn up the music like this, just waving your hand around in the air or to mute it. Your, you know, energizing comfort functionality it's all very 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 nice overall and i guess this might take a while but hopefully the guy in front does decide to move at some point soon <laughs> he's got like 100 meters in front of him almost he's just chilling anyway um it will be what it will be when you're back in the de-restricted sections you just get to like 250 plus out of nothing wow <laughs> It's so quick. 
back then where we began and in a moment we will go and check out the cars inside the showroom but before we do in the car here we're currently in efficient comfort 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 and four wheel drive we will go well one press of this into m1 gives us all the sport settings and a double press of the m2 button takes us up to the sport plus the full almost hardcore configuration but the thing that i would like to show you is how the valve control works which is through the cruise control toggles here at the side of the steering wheel now if you don't have cruise control active you use the toggle in the center so it's currently, I think, valve closed. Press this up and you can hear the valve opening. You can hear that difference, which makes a huge difference when you give the car a few blips. Valve closed, just to start us off. I mean, it's loud, there's no question about that, but valve open, listen to this. that this car makes of course you can make it quieter you can close the exhaust valves should you prefer but when they're open those cracks that you get particularly bouncing off the building just around us here it's so so loud obviously in the m8 as we know from the shmi reveal it is loaded with technology things like the digital displays you have a drowsiness sensor here that detects if the driver is feeling sleepy you've got the ability to customize and configure all of your settings even the braking you can change the feel of the brake pedal you've got your gesture control like i said you can wave your hand away if you want to reject a phone call you've got comfortable seats which are both heated and ventilated all the comforts that you would expect to have inside and obviously now a few extra finishing touches as well the manhart logo as well as these carbon fiber inserts for the steering wheel heated steering wheel on this one as well really 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 nice and your assist systems for parking uh, and reversing and everything that this car offers for the time being though let's switch it off the steering wheel lifts up to climb on out and we will go inside and take a quick look at the cars that are here inside the showroom so i've got the key on me we will just lock this for the moment i think the mirrors will fold it's got a chime just to confirm but then inside let's come straight through to these two cars parked up at the back here two very different generations of bmw m cars on the right we actually have an e30 m3 but this is an alpina b6 3.5 s that manhart had given an even bigger turbo and made it even crazier but alongside it the more recent m4 gts or in this case the m4 dtm champion edition they made 200 of them them, but this is soon to become the full MH4 GTR and I think I will have to come back to see exactly what it is like. We also have here though, if we come through, the new Supra, in this case with 450 horsepower, a few changes you can see with the new lip, they've given us a new set of wheels as well as the design pack in the satin grey and red, but 450 horsepower up from the standard 340 and then next to it we have the Golf R, or in this case the RS 450, again 450 horsepower on the Golf R, four wheel drive, hot hatch, that thing must be blisteringly fast and then next to it the mh6 700 the 700 horsepower m6 grand coupe you can see the full carbon fiber bonnet on this one looking very mean and then we have the mh x3 600 600 horsepower the x3m and we have the mh8 600 the 600 horsepower m850i a very nice range of different cars and of course i've been out here a few times over the years and filmed a number of different projects that manhart have completed and worked on but this when it comes to autobahn driving this is just a different category it is so comfortable at high speed it has those dual characteristics that loud shouty snappy sound that we've heard if you want to be that kind of style of driving but it also has an effortless power when you're going at pretty decent speed and like i said it was very very busy today being out on the autobahns i didn't think it would be quite that busy to be honest but we got one opportunity to break through the 300 this car did it so quickly and so easily you'd have no qualms driving at 300 for hours to be honest in here apart from the fact that you'll need to be making regular visits to the fuel station but it just does it in a way that not many other cars do you can drive that speed in a supercar obviously very very easily but you get out of the other end tired adrenaline just buzzing basically and this you'd get out the other end and you just go for a, for a wander you know you just feel completely chilled and calm and the numbers the numbers you know 240 250 260 270 280 the way it builds up through them pretty spectacular so i've quite enjoyed driving this car today um, eye-opening levels of power, the most powerful BMW M8 competition. So a big thanks to Manhart for the opportunity. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the experience as well to see what it was all about. 
But I think that's going to be it for this time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.